6.4, the sine law. The sine law is really great. It's one of those formulas that you can just memorize and plunk in the values and get an answer. Sometimes in math it works that way, sometimes in math it doesn't work that way. We have to think a little bit more, but this one is pretty easy. The only thing that gets really tricky with this one is the ambiguous case. Um, that's the reason why when we were doing questions in 6.3, we were discussing how many triangles does this give? Does it give zero triangles? Does it give one? Or do we have the possibility for two triangles? Now, there are certain, um, there are certain conditions under which we don't have to worry about um, don't have to worry about the ambiguous case. In the examples that I'm going to be doing today, we don't actually need to worry about that ambiguous case. But, why don't I just let the cat out of the bag and give you the sign law! We, uh, another really cool thing actually about the sign law is that you can have, um, you can express it two different ways. Okay? So you can either say for triangle A, B, C, that looks something like this. It doesn't matter, A, B, C. And what's cool about the sign law is it doesn't have to be a right angle triangle. Remember with right angle trig, so toa, you can only have a right angle triangle. But this one, you can have any kind of triangle. For triangle A, B, C, so something that looks like this, we can say that sine of angle A over uh, little a, equals sine of big B over little b equals sine of C over little c. Now we can, we can name the sides a couple of different things. We can either name this guy little a or we can call it C B. We can either call this C or we can call it A B. We can either call this little b or a C or C A. It doesn't really matter. The other way that we can express the sine law is like this. A over sine A equals uh, little b over sine b equals little c over sine c. Whichever way, uh, whichever way works. It doesn't really matter which one you choose. Um, if you are looking for a length of a side, it's easier to use this one, having the length on the numerator. And if you're looking for an angle, it's easier to use this one right here. So there are certain conditions under which we don't have to worry about the ambiguous case. And that is, if this right here is theta, okay, if triangle ABC is a right angle triangle, okay, don't worry about it, okay? Don't worry about that ambiguous case, exclamation mark. Uh, what else? If little a or c b is greater than, um, than b or c, so the opposite is bigger than uh, b or c, don't worry about it! Okay? Lastly, if CB or little a is equal to sine a, don't worry about it! You don't have to worry about the ambiguous case if there are three uh, different uh, different things. So if you know that the opposite is bigger than one of the sides that's been given, don't worry about it. If, uh, so for this one, if ABC is a, um, is a right angle triangle, don't worry about it. And if uh, CB equals sine A, don't worry about it. In fact, these two things are connected, right? Think about yesterday. There's one last don't worry about it. I'm going to put it right here. If two angles given, don't worry about it. Okay? Because then we know that the last, we know actually, if we know two of the angles, we know 
all three of the angles, right? Because they all have to add up to 180. Um, so then it makes it a lot less, um, a lot less ambiguous because we know what the angles are. It's not like it could be one thing or another. It could be the reference angle or it could be the related angle in the second quadrant. We're going to make sense of all that mumbo jumbo that I just said right now. We're going to make more sense of it tomorrow. This is the crux though, right here.